Oh, hey gang, welcome back to Big Boy. Finally got rid of that dang cold that took forever. Part of the uh, part of the joys of getting a little bit older. I guess things take longer to heal in some way, shape, or other. Anyway, you don't really care about that. What you care about is the wars of Marcus Aurelius, right? This little guy. It's a Hollenspiel title, published by a uh, uh, manufactured by Blue Panther. So you get the big, thick. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're die cut or laser cut. They're probably not laser cut, but uh, big, thick uh, wooden counters and wonderful artwork by uh, a variety of artists that Hollenspiel uses that are now starting to be picked up by other larger companies. I think this is Hollenspiel's game number. It's either 36 or 37. No, I lied. Uh, 27. So... 27 games in, what, has it been two years yet? It feels, uh, it feels like they started yesterday, but they have a prodigious ability to print on demand and, and make some pretty decent games. Uh, I've enjoyed a lot of them. Many of them are more abstract than I usually play, and they tend to uh, drive, however, much harder choices when you're playing the games. In particular... The solo games, and I'm thinking uh, Agricola or Agricola, depending on where you come from. Uh, Master of Britain was particularly frustrating for me and difficult. Lots of hard choices there. I've tried playing Charlemagne, and I lasted maybe three turns on that thing. I just I kept dying. <laughs> so when this came out, I, I'm a huge... Uh, I won't say I'm a fan of Marcus Aurelius, but uh, Stoicism has always interested me in the fact that this dude was, uh, you know, in essence, co-emperor, uh, but really emperor of uh, all of the Roman Empire <clears throat> in, you know, for sort of 162 onwards or thereabouts. Uh, fascinating guy, interesting to read about. And uh, his period of history is pretty interesting because he inherited a bit of a bit of a poop stain, right? Uh, he had the Parthians giving him a hard time, uh, potentially giving him a hard time and threatening at one end of the empire. And uh, he was required to divert, divert, bleh, divert forces off to take care of that. And uh, then that uh, encouraged the sort of the Dacian area, uh, sort of the, I guess, modern day Yugoslavia and Bulgaria and all that around that, and Romania and stuff, I think it is, uh, all around there. Uh, those tribes all decided that it'd be fun to uh, push in on and take advantage of this, this uh, lapse in uh, strength by the Romans, which then encouraged, encouraged the Germanic tribes to do the same sorts of things. And so this war ended up being called the Marcomanni or Marcomannic Wars, and it went on for an extended period of time. And, uh, you know, this game particularly runs from 170 through to 179. And you'll see that uh, I've stopped here at 174. It's because I'm about to, you know, I, I'm about, I lost. <laughs> uh, my political uh, will, basically, the Imperium, down to zero. Automatic game end. Uh, so, Solitaire Games, not my forte. So anything you hear from me and, and, and hear about this game, you got to kind of take it in that context, right? Because I'm not an expert at them, number one. I get a little frustrated sometimes when there's not enough to do or choose and I'm playing the game for, I'm like the AI manipulator, right? I, all I'm doing is playing the game for the AI because it can't physically move the pieces. So I tend to get frustrated with solitaire games very quickly. Uh, the likes of... B17 and things like that, uh, you know, some of the, the Hunter series of sub games, I find incredibly tedious. While the story is wonderful, machine guns firing at the Mischerschmitz and the sub sinking a ship and all that, it writes a great narrative. And I guess I just sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. So why am I playing this then? Well, I told you I'm a big fan of uh, Marcus. I'm interested in. His, uh, the, his historical era and the comparison between him and Trajan, I think is interesting. 
Uh, there was a period of changes in military tactics and overall strategic positioning by the Romans. They kind of went from, well, they'd been transitioning from an offensive uh, expansionist empire to somewhat of, hey, <laughs> let's build a freaking wall, right? And uh, keep out the bad guys. Uh, so that was a thing. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the changes in uh, weaponry and in tactics uh, w- was pretty prevalent as well. So it's an interesting period. So here's a game that's highly abstracted from all that. You know, I'm not going to get uh, slash swords and we're not going to see uh, shields be, whether they're uh, oval or square. No one really cares at this scale. But it is nevertheless... Uh, historically interesting exploration of the specific challenges that Marcus faced. He was constantly shuffling legions from one region of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, eastern and northeastern uh, Europe uh, on a regular basis. He had to shuttle forces off map or to the uh, Eastern Empire, Eastern part of the Roman Empire, he had a lot of challenges uh, uh, imposed upon him. And uh, this game really captures that exceptionally well. And that's probably the thing that I'll take away from this game. It's interesting. And of course, as a solitaire game, it's freaking frustrating. I, I read somewhere that this might be uh, you know, like State of Siege style game. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I've never played a State of Siege game. I think that's a solitaire series that, uh, you know, the uh, the now defunct Victory Point games used to, used to make or something like that. And I know Victory Point was acquired by somebody, but whatever. World's changed over there. So what, how, how does this game work and, and what, what goes on? Uh, let's be frank. It's very straightforward. In the uh, summer round, the spring round, you're getting five cards of the Romans and then, then you get uh, three cards and then you get one card in the winter. And the, the barbarians get three cards all the way through. So there's your first challenge, right? You may get more, but you may have, you can only keep a certain amount from one round to another. And uh, you've got to choose very carefully what you do and how you do it. So you have to make some uh, immediately. One of the first choices you have to make here is, is hand management and, and how what are you going to keep for the next round? How many cards are you allowed to keep for the next round? Uh, there's only one you're allowed to keep, but you, unless you have uh, these meditation things activated, which requires uh, this card to be played, uh, you've got some immediate choices to make and there's always something you need to be doing. You've got to build these forts that slow down advances. You know, these guys will come on down here. They'll, they'll come from here to here to here and they're going to uh, move freely unless you have a fort. And then that fort will defer a movement uh, by them and you'll lose the fort or it'll drop a level and then drop another level and that will slow them down. Uh, of course, you've got your armies that are kind of arrayed in here by each area. You know, you can have three legions here and six legions here. Well, you have six in each, but there are three here, none here, and whatever. So, I, you know, you spend a lot of time choosing where where you want to fight and try and push these guys back and put forts up and slow things down. And it gets harder to conquer each one of these areas as you go further north and east because... Uh, you know, you're closer to the homeland, right? So these these modifiers are applied to the strength of this unit, and that needs to be piled up against the the, the strength of the you know the number of uh, legions that are involved in the attack, and of course a die roll, and of course you know forts make a difference, and some other factors. You know, cards may be played by both sides and things like that. So uh, that really. Uh, you know the, the the ability to push your way up is very difficult. You're not seeing the armies on the map, although sometimes I must admit I like to you know pop the dudes up here and just say this is where they're at, uh, that type of thing. Uh, you have leadership uh, mod- modifiers that are, are going to impact combat as well, and uh, you know poor old Marcus can get fatigued. He might be uh, a three, or he could drop down to a one, which is always a nasty surprise. Uh, you'll have uh, 
the need to service the off-map conflicts and deal with those things. And these cards, as they're played, uh, there are these surges that occurred historically. And you'll see here, uh, these cards will say, uh, add to the surge pile. <laughs> well, as you pull your three cards, right, and you pop them down and you, they're going to be played, right, and you just read what they are, then it's going to say, oh, yeah, you need to add this to the surge pile, dude. So you may have gone ahead and played a card and got one of these armies here to uh, flip or, you know, uh, where's, the, where's the right color for this dude? There we go. Go under a truce, right? But, and so that means they're not going to play this turn. They're not going to play this year or this, this season of the year. So that's awesome. Then you'll get this next surge thing will come down. And it goes, oh, i got three cards full. Whoopee. So boom, everyone, the, off comes the truth, the truce marker. And then you, you know, you've, put, you've played all those cards. You go to the next season. Another surge happens. Boom. Now this guy's activated or even worse, he'll get flipped to his strong side. Uh, and you've got these little buggers that, uh, that run uh, aggressively through your defense is like a hot knife through butter and it is a freaking beat down every time you lose a battle there's a legion disappearing off into the recovery bucket you can lose these uh these imperium items uh, uh will it's basically your your political prestige right <laughs> Uh, your prestige level and so that goes up and down like a yo-yo you play these action cards to increase your prestige which you nearly always need to do nearly every season of course playing this action card then prevents you from playing an action card for one of the the areas for where all your roman legions are so you've got to you've got to make some finely balanced choices uh, there's a lot more to this game than first appears i think like many solitaire games it's it's going to require uh, a significant number of efforts, a to get a win, <clears throat> as uh, as uh, as Marcus as the Romans, but b to fully appreciate the nuances of the game. Uh, everything about this title is, I would say, in general, uh, pretty pretty decent quality. The counters are nice if you like the the thick counters. Uh, the map artwork is very evocative and thematic. Uh, we've got some nice, uh, you know, you've got the uh, different languages represented. You've got some nice historical commentary and different aspects of history represented here. Uh, the cards are decent quality as well. So there's lots of goodness about this. It's only eight or 10 pages of rules, maybe, uh, maybe 11 if we're lucky including designer notes, comes in a nice box. Thoroughly enjoyed it, it's a keeper for me, uh, which is funny because like I said, I'm not a big solitaire gamer guy and I really enjoyed the, the choices that need to be made here because you really are step, stepping back as the overall Roman emperor and he, in his role as Roman Emperor uh, to, to make choices about how you're going to execute this war and push back the, <clears throat> the savage hordes. And, of course, uh, I, think, I think this lends itself well to repeated gameplay. And as a solitaire title, I think it gives you enough choices here to make it interesting enough to keep my attention plays very quickly that's the point i wanted to make i got lost for a second there uh it, it plays quickly too because you're literally uh, once you get your hand of cards and you flip the flip the three the three cards for the uh, the various tribes you literally play those out adjust the board as you see fit combat takes 10 seconds if you can count marginally well you may actually have to do some addition uh i did struggle a little bit with combat resolution in terms of results and impact of the results i found the rules clear but 
for some reason, I, I was a little muddy on the uh, on some of the results and, and different bits and pieces purely because I, t I took this with me on the road and started playing and then stopped and this is my second effort here and uh, I pretended like I knew how to play. So I had to come back and, and refresh myself uh, fairly uh, fairly aggressively. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a very nice effort at capturing the Marcomannic Wars, uh, looking at uh, Marcus's role in that, and accurately capturing the strategic challenges that occurred. It would be super nifty to uh, have some tactical uh, board games come out that would uh, deal with this particular era and indeed deal with Trajan's era at a tactical slash operational level. I think that'd be a lot of fun to, to explore. <clears throat> All right, that's my quick take. Hope you guys liked it. Talk to you soon. Thanks for checking in the, at the big board. And uh, I don't usually tell you who I am, but my name's Kevin, if you didn't know. And we look forward to you joining us again soon. Cheers.